But the first thing I thought about when I saw that deal is, Lord have mercy. If you're on that side, just stay on that side. That's all I got to say. So Tatum was not ready when he first got into the league. He's not as good as LeBron, not as good as Steph, not as good as the old guard. And now he's not as good as the young guard was his window two years ago. And this is why I don't think they're going to get it done. If you don't have a guy who has already been either an MVP or damn close, you don't win. When it comes to the 2024 Boston Celtics, they're a pretty odd phenomenon. As from game one to game 82, they dominated like few teams in league history. Of course, winning 64 games, having the best offensive rating, third best defensive rating, never losing three straight games, and most importantly, having the fifth largest margin of victory in a single season. And you'd think a team with that resume, that level of dominance, coming into the playoffs with a clear-cut favorite to win the championship. But if you follow these playoffs closely, you know this Boston team at every single turn, they've been doubted. Who do you have winning the whole darn thing? Dallas. I'm going with, with uh, Dallas. I'm picking six. I thought about five. I got the Mavs in six. Not a chance. I, I like the Mavs. I said after, I think, game three th that I like the Mavs in five, and I still like the Mavs in five. Mavericks in six. I'm going Mavs in seven. Okay. Ooh. I'm Mavs in six with you. The ring ceremony for the Mavericks there it is. is going to be in oh, Boston shoot. in game seven. Game Look, Boston fans, Boston fans are nervous right now. Porzingis is healthy. They've got a lot of elements. I think I would take both Dallas and Minnesota against them. And seeing clips like those, they've aged like milk. And why those people doubted Boston, doubted this team, they won 64 games, was in large part due to past playoff failures with completely different rosters. And not to mention Tatum and Brown, the majority of those playoff failures were both under 25 years old. And that's a pretty good branching off point. To all the media, the pundits, the experts who said Tatum and Brown, they couldn't coexist, they'd never get it done, just enjoy your summer and eat humble pie. Thought about this this morning for a long time. You have to break up the duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So you think it's time to blow up the Jays. Why? It is because they, look, it's not a lot of high-fiving. It's not a lot of chest bumping. When one is having success, the other one is not. And that's how it is. So as bad as we all would like to see it work, they can't coexist. To me, that's ultimately what the Boston Celtics are missing. They have tremendous talent. And you have these two all-NBA players. One of them has to go. Actively trying to break two guys up who haven't hit their prime or their peak yet, is basketball malpractice. And the funny thing is that Boston traded Brown, traded Tatum, these same pundits, these same morons, they'd be saying, well, Boston made a huge mistake, they gave up too early. And once again, the way you don't listen to the media, and false narratives. And speaking of narratives, for really the entire Tatum and Brown tenure, there's been this looming narrative of these two players, they aren't clutch, and they fold. Now look, don't get me wrong, being clutch, it's very, very important when you're called upon to be clutch. But looking at the NBA playoffs, the NBA finals, historically speaking, a lot of these games, these series, aren't nail biters, they're down to the wire. And this Celtics team in the postseason, their margin of victory is 10.2 points per game. If you look through NBA history since the merger, here are the only teams ahead of Boston in that category. The Celtics, 1986, Bulls, 96, Lakers, 87, Bulls again, 91, the 01 Lakers, and the 2017 Warriors. When you look at all those teams historically, they're the cream of the crop, the best teams ever. But if you dive deep in their playoff runs, they weren't really quote-unquote tested and pushed to the brink with numerous clutch moments. Which once again goes to prove the clutch gene being clutch as a team in the finals is a little bit overblown, historically speaking. And in regards to this year's Celtics team, again, one of the constant narratives I've heard 24-7 is that late in games in the clutch, they're too iso ball centric and they won't get it done. They're the worst offense I've seen for grown folks. Is it like, <laughs> for grown <laughs> like, it's like they, have, it's like they just get a ball to one guy and go one-on-one. -on -one. They win a lot of games because they got talent. 
But there's, it's like, I'm like, what are they doing? It's like, here, Jason, you get to the top of the key, go one on one, shoot a step back three. Jalen, you go back there, you make a move. Everybody just stands around. It's frustrating. Boston concerns me because it's too much one on one, UD. Mm -hmm. It's not JB and JT feeding off of each other. It's your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, okay? Now, if you're talking about past Celtics teams, the 2020, 2022 Celtics, yes, at some points they'd be stagnant. They go into hero ball, iso ball mode, and jack up terrible shots. But we're looking at the 24 Celtics. Rarely, if ever, do they play hero ball and kind of my turn, your turn play with Jalen and Tatum exclusively taking all the shots. I mean, look at game two versus Dallas, for example. Drew Holiday, Derek White, they made numerous big time clutch plays on the stretch on both ends of the floor. And the poetic finish to game two, of course, Jalen Brown, under 40 seconds in the game, drives left and puts the game on ice. And coming into this year's finals, again, what was the narrative and talking point about the Dallas Mavericks with Kyrie and Luka? Rachel's asking me, have they been tested? I'm saying, if you're being tested by Andrew Nemhard and Isaiah Jackson, what are you going to do when you play them guys? What you've been going through is not reality. It's not. So, it's and not. so reality is going to show up you put Kyrie on the Celtics, there's a conversation about who is the best player on this team. And that just means that at any point in time, Kyrie Luka will be the two best players. I think they are the two biggest alphas. Kyrie and, and Luka are just too clutch. And we know Tatum has had his struggles in the clutch. And surprising to a lot of fans, the best fourth quarter player in the series, the best late game player in the series, it's been Jalen Brown by a mile. Look at these fourth quarter stats. Jalen, 6 points per game on 8 of 13 shooting. Luka Doncic, 2.7 points per game, 3 of 15 shooting. Kyrie Irving, slightly better, 4.3 points per game on 4 of 11 shooting. The so-called best backcourt of all time, the clutch time killers Kyrie and Luka have folded in the face of the Boston Celtics. And speaking of folding, look at Game 3 in Dallas. Boston in the fourth quarter, they're in the process of folding and blowing this game. And according to the media narratives, what should happen is that Kyrie and Lucas should take over and bring this game home. Well, eh, that didn't exactly happen in this game. On the drive, kicks it back out. White puts up a three. Bang! Pass inside to Tatum. Tatum double team. Gets inside and throws it down. The screen. Drives. Pulls up. Jump shot. Pumps it in. As you saw right there, multiple players in Boston making big shots and clutch time plays. And if that's not being battle tested, I really don't know what is. Because past Celtics teams, if they had a 20 point lead in the fourth quarter and it got down to three, they probably blow that game, choke it away, and not come through. But this Celtics team, they are a different beast. And the beauty about this team in that game three versus Dallas, Tatum, he had a dunk. Jalen Brown, put back layup, and a clutch jumper. And of course, Drew Holiday drives the lane, kicks to Derek White for a three. That is four different players in Boston who made big time plays late in this game. Not just one guy, two guy, Tatum versus Luka, Jalen versus Kyrie. It was the entire Boston team coming up big in game three. And one last point I'll make about game three, a lot of the hype that they had about game three was that Porzingis wasn't playing and Dallas finally had their chance to seize the series and steal a game. The absence of Chris Tapps Porzingis, if he's either unable to play or unable to be effective in these NBA Finals, would mean what? The door's open for Dallas. This is why, Mike, that I, I do think this series is losable for the Celtics, because, look, it's one thing to play a banged-up Cleveland team, a banged-up Indiana team, and play guys like Luke Cornett and O'Shea Brissett. It's another thing to play Dallas and play those guys. He's not in that game. It opens the floodgates for the Dallas Mavericks and gives them a perfect opportunity to potentially even up this series. Now look, when it comes to Porzingis, a great all-star caliber player, and for Boston, the cherry on top for their team that takes them over the edge. But with him being hurt, I really wasn't panicked doing this injury as a series-changing injury. As Boston for the entire playoffs has really played without him. And if Porzingis was out, was injured for an average NBA team, 
That'd be a death blow at the end of their season, and it'd be wraps on them winning a championship. But for Boston, so deep, so versatile, even Porzingis being out isn't the biggest word in the world. And addressing the Finals MVP, I think it's pretty clear at this point Jalen Brown is going to win that walking away. And the thing with Jalen, I don't want you guys giving him fake props, just kind of boosting him up to downplay Tatum. Because Brown in his own right is a top 15 type player. But the problem I have with a lot of the Brown discussion, people aren't showing Brown respect because they like Jalen Brown. Why they're giving Brown props showing him respect is to downplay Tatum, which quite frankly kind of rubs me the wrong way. And for a lot of the anti-Boston crowd who wanted to see them lose, the only moral victory they have is Tatum shooting under 40%. Which I guess, I mean, hang that on your mantle, Tatum had a so-so finals shooting the basketball. When it's all said and done, Tatum and Brown, one of the best duos in the NBA, and as individuals, are both top 15 guys. And to all the pundits and fans that Jalen Brown, you know, he wasn't worth the contract, has no left, he's a fake all-star. I mean, where are you guys now? 